It is often said that the human brain is the most complex object in the known universe. It has control over the movements we make, our ability to navigate and interact with the world, and operates with a computing power which exceeds that of most supercomputers. We study the brain to unlock the secrets of consciousness and neurodevelopment. We aim to understand when and where to intervene when things go wrong. But researchers are also interested in interfacing our brains and bodies with the computers and machines that surround our daily lives. Brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs, can be used in clinical settings to control the movements of prosthetic limbs using our thoughts. They can also allow patients with motor neuron disease or locked-in syndrome to communicate. BCIs measure changes in brain activity, which are interpreted by a computer program and used to choose an output to a device. Most BCIs rely on a measurement of current flow in the neurons which make up the brain. For example, in the case of controlling a prosthetic arm, imagined hand or arm movements produces neuronal activity like that of the real thing. Patients undergo training where machine learning is applied to measured brain activity to isolate features which can then be used for real-time control. As BCIs typically deal with single trial events, the signal-to-noise ratio of our measurements needs to be very high, and as different regions of the brain are responsible for different actions, the spatial information needs to be very good. Typically, this has restricted BCIs to the invasive placement of electrodes on the surface of the brain or deeper within its structure, restricting BCI use in patients to research. Elon Musk's company Neuralink are developing high-density electrode devices, releasing animal results earlier this year. Although human trials are expected to commence soon, the devices still require some form of invasive procedure to implant. Non-invasive BCIs using electroencephalography, or EEG, where electrodes are placed on the scalp, could allow for more widespread adoption, although the EEG signal suffers from poor signal quality due to the conductivity profile of the skull and scalp. Measurement of the magnetic fields produced by neuronal current flow allows for high signal-to-noise ratio and excellent spatial resolution. But conventional MEG systems are not commonly available and feature fixed sensor arrays, meaning patients are unable to move during an experiment. Newly developed quantum sensors have allowed us to construct movement-robust OPM MEG systems, which have potential to open the use of BCIs in clinical settings and enhance quality of life for patients. We have been working with neuroscientists who specialise in EEG-based BCIs at KU Leuven to develop a MindSpeller OPM MEG BCI demonstration. MindSpelling allows patients who are otherwise unable to communicate or physically interact with others to form words by adjusting their gaze to a series of target letters or simple phrases. In our pilot experiment, a healthy volunteer is shown a 3 by 3 grid of squares. These squares each flicker at a different frequency. This flicker is then mimicked by the neurons in the visual cortex when we observe the flicker. Frequency analysis of the MEG data can reveal which square the volunteer was focused on at each point. The volunteer undergoes a training session in which they are instructed to shift their gaze to each square in turn. A machine learning classifier is then used to extract features which correspond to each square. The volunteer is then shown the same grid, with each square now representing a different letter. A target word is shown on the screen and the volunteer must spell the word by adjusting their gaze appropriately. Let's have a look at it in action. Here we see live footage where a volunteer is spelling the words Robin Hood by shifting their gaze to the separate letters on the makeshift keyboard. We hope that the continued development of these technologies can allow widespread adoption of BCIs to support those with a variety of conditions. So uh, quantum technologies are enabling us to build new brain-computer interfaces that are non-invasive and have an ever-increasing sensitivity. Here we're exploiting the unique combination of high sensitivity and good spatial information to enable the subject to spell out words simply by changing their gaze to different letters. 
Uh, our research is focused on developing the imaging technology to the point where we have the highest fidelity signals possible. These types of applications really just demonstrate how good the data from our quantum-enabled systems are. In real time, we're taking completely raw, unaveraged data and identifying flicker frequencies encoded in the neuronal assemblies of the visual cortex. This combination of machine learning with quantum-enabled scanning is obviously just extremely powerful. You know, the, the BCI is one of a great many applications of the scanner, but it's one that we see becoming increasingly important, especially if um, it can be used to enable communication with patients with locked-in syndrome. Um, I'd say as a subject, it, it's great fun. It really is amazing to have the scanner that we built, you know, read my mind. And it also gives you a score at the end. So we, we did get, you know, a little bit competitive. I obviously got 100%, but Matt only got 96%, and that meant he didn't want to speak to me for a few days.